We're here with Kai Klose from Deck 13 and they, we have seen the first gameplay of The Search. The Search is, um, uses the same kind of um, style like your last game, Lords of the Fallen, with uh, an action RPG which is very challenging, but it's a completely different setting and a completely different game in that way. Um, and it's a very grim future. Why did you decide to, to do a game which is plays in the future with, with such a harsh look? Yeah, we were watching too much news on TV and uh, thought, oh my God, what's going to happen with the world? <laughs> so we said, yeah, let's think about what will happen with the world when it's really like going the bad side. <laughs> so we said, um, okay, let's, let's think about a scenario that's really creepy and scary where people can recognize stuff. Because in the fantasy environment, of course, all is some, some product of Im imagination, but we wanted to make it feel like product of projection of, okay, this might really happen and you recognize stuff from today and it makes you really feel creepy about it. That was the basic idea of how to change the scenario, play with stuff that feels relevant to us today, but it's something, yeah, very, very over the top and very, very special and where our style of combat really fits in well. Can you give us an example of uh, what kind of stuff we see in this game which we might, rec might recognize? Well, basically, we, we are painting the picture starting from a kind of giant corporation, giant company, and there were games in the past with this, like, 80s sci-fi corporation stuff where we'd say this is totally out of date so now companies work differently now this the scary factor is somewhere else if you take a company like Google or uh, Foxconn or whoever they have a very very different even maybe attractive appeal but but aren't there parts that that go out of control or what might happen if these kind of, of companies or tech companies go out of control in the future what might they produce I mean we know they they're producing robotics they're producing uh, uh, cars that drive uh, automatically and so on. So what will happen if this really kind of explodes? And this is what we, what we said as a, as a scenario where you will recognize things of today more than the classic 80s uh, future stuff that you know from past games. So we start in the game as a normal worker in a, in a, in a company and um, the first day isn't like a normal first day and we got all these attach attachments, which is which is normal, but they don't work like maybe we want to. Um, what 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 hap what what is happening in this company? Yeah, we don't tell everything because at the beginning uh, the player really doesn't know what what's happening. Like you just said, uh, he got equipped with his work equipment, which is this exoskeleton that's attached to his body to make him uh, able to do all this work. And he also got some implants that that uh, also are connected to his brain and and to his uh, spinal system. And uh, well, then something happens, and he doesn't know what happens. He he kind of wakes up after some kind of shock, after some blackout, and um, yeah, the company is not really at least least the part where he is not really functioning anymore. So he says, okay, what's going on? He needs to find out, he needs to go through this. And um, also sees that there's a lot of aggressive stuff happening that's deadly to him. So he needs to start to defend himself, pick up stuff that he uses as weapons, but it's all not, not there for the purpose of fighting. So you always need to repurpose it and use makeshift weapons and use it for your way to survive. Okay. And but you're still working as an action RPG, and so there are similar elements to Lords of the Fallen, like like the, the similar as in the combat. Um, what can you tell us about how this combat works? Mm -hmm. So yeah, we really like this one-on-one -on -one combat, where you have the other enemy, you, s you circle around him, you try to find the weak spot, and you need to really see what he's doing, even what he's wearing. And uh, we wanted to extend this, so we still wanted to have this, this intense feeling and not break this, but thought, okay, we want to make it even stronger. So what we added is you can target specific body parts just very naturally with your controller. Um, you can also choose which part of the enemy you want to hit in real time without any pauses in the game or any slowdowns or anything. And it's working really, really well. And you can use this for a variety of, of reasons. The first is to, um, to target a weak spot, to say, okay, he's not armored there, so I strike there and then I have an easier way of defeating him. But then later, the same enemy, I can also target the strong spots because I can take them. So he's got a weapon attached to his arm, he's got special armor, something like that. I can then cut off this body part and use that part for myself, which is a bit cruel, but um, yeah, this is what you can also do. So then 
the fight is more risky because you need to target strong body parts, you do not like attack the weak parts, but if you do it, the reward is much higher and can use the stuff for yourself. So crafting is also a big part of the game. Yeah, so we got a real strong crafting mechanism. You cannot just pick the parts and attach them. Well, in the demo that you just saw, you can, but um, in the final game, you will need to go to a crafting station to collect the resources to craft these materials, and then you can build a lot of stuff that you can use for your character, and you can build it in a way that fits your playstyle. So you can do like heavy, strong stuff or sneaky stuff and so on, just like you want to play the game. And this is uh, for your for your for the weapon and your armory. Uh, yes, so um, it's uh, weapons that you can that you can get that you can craft. Um, it's for the armor that you wear, and also the other part is you get these implants, which are sort of skills. But we don't need some some strange skill system here. We can just really use these implants that are attached to your to your brain that enhance your your functionality, if you will, of your body. And um, these are your skills. You can pick them up. You can develop them. You can you can shape them. Is there a regular level up in this game as well? Yes, uh, you level up. This is what we call your exo power from your exoskeleton. And it gives you more energy and more power that you can use. And um, there are lots of things that you can only do when you have that. Like you have more implant slots that you can fill with energy, for example. So you can have more implants that are working. Uh, and also can, you can use it to override locked doors. And, but there are doors that are uh, like locked in a, in a simple way. You can override them at the beginning. But some have a very hard lock that you can only override when your level has also risen. which brings us to the fact that you can go back to other to old levels and say okay there were these doors and what's behind them and now I'm strong enough to open them and so you can go back and forth through the game world finding new stuff. Uh, when you say that you can go back to, to, to other places is it, is, can you, is it like an open world what we have in the search? A little bit. So it is still organized in a level by level structure but all the levels together uh, give you the game world that opens up so you can go back to levels some levels are even some kind of hub where you go back and forth and always discover new stuff and new things are happening and then there are other levels that you just explore that are new and they will always hold back some secrets and some side quests so you you see that and you cannot do it yet because you're not strong enough you don't know how to go there all the enemies are just too tough and then you say okay I'll come back later and then you equip yourself you get maybe a special sort of, of mechanism that helps you open stuff or, or use stuff and then you come back and then you say ha that was this door I go there now I can now fulfill this side quest and then you can go there the, those kind of um, action RPGs are f often feel a bit s slow while you while, because you need to learn how the enemy acts and but uh, lots of the fawn try to be a bit more more action a bit more action approach do you try to try this in the search as well to make the game a bit more f faster yeah, we're starting with the animations. It all feels a bit faster, a bit, a bit lighter when you play it. And um, also, if, if there are like long corridors you need to walk, it will not take you so long. So it's not like a vast open world where you say, oh, come on, what's happening next? Nothing's happening now. Um, so, um, and the other thing is we're, we're uh, introducing a lot of shortcuts in the game. So every time that you really cleared some area, or at least the, the main part of it, you'll find a shortcut bringing you back to the start. So you say, oh, okay, and now I can go here, and then the, the game world is bigger, but you don't need to like walk all the long corridors again. But you say, okay, I can just go here. So we think you can move through the game world really quickly, and even in the combat it feels a bit faster than before. Okay, and there is... Lots of the got some got some problems it was a good was a good game but there was some some moments where the people uh, players wasn't very uh, doesn't feel very good with what did you learn from the development of Lords of the Fallen what do you want to change in the search well um, we really listened a lot to how players uh, uh, perceived the game and also what they liked so first of all we didn't want to take away what they liked we didn't want to say yeah okay now we do it completely differently but we wanted to keep that but we wanted to make it better and one thing is really that some said oh combat is really slow but many of them took uh, like strong armor and like a strong character who was really slow and uh, so uh, others took a very very uh, lightly equipped uh, 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 character at the beginning and was killed a lot at the beginning so some people said oh 
I die a lot. And others say, whoa, it's so slow. And then we asked them and they told us what they're wearing. We said, okay, so let's change this, this time. So this time everyone starts with the same character, but they can find the equipment or craft the equipment that they like. So they know, okay, I want to go like stronger. I, oh, now I'm slower. I understand. I don't want this. I, I want to be faster. I take this equipment. So it's up to the players. Hopefully it's better communicated in a better way how they go through the game. And the other thing was that some people said, it's a bit linear. So I went through the game and yeah, these parts were pretty easy and I was through. These were very tough. But that's it. So we said, okay, this time you can choose easy and hard parts because the game is not so linear. You can see something, you say, okay, I come back later, that's too tough for me. Or I say, oh, I'm so cool, I take the shortcut, I'll defeat this tough enemy, and then I have really a new part of the level uh, unlocked for me. So it's more freedom to the player, more freedom in the game world, and hopefully this will appeal to different play styles uh, where people have more fun exploring the game world. When you say different playstyle, does it also inc include that um, some that it can be easier for players who want it more easy? Well, we surely don't have something like an easy mode, but like uh, the simple example, when you have uh, an enemy and he really blocks you and you die, you need to replay a bit of the of the game, and you play against the same enemies. And as I just said, you can cut off armor parts of them, so you can collect them, even though you already went through there. There are enemies that you can now use to cut the armor parts. And then you can wear this armor and you go back to this enemy and it's easier because you have more armor on you. So like the game gets easier if you have make an effort of using stuff in the game. But it's not like by pushing buttons or so you it's all uh, during combat. So if I want to have a good armor to have an easier fight against the boss, I need to defeat five to ten enemies to get my resources and this is what I need to do. But they're of course not so hard like the boss, but still it's an effort. This is how we want to do it. So you can do it by doing some more loops and they're not like, oh that's boring, I'm just doing some grinding, but you do new stuff all the time. And that's why we think um, this is the kind of balancing that we really like. Some people like do some extra work to get stronger and others are just like the cool achievers that say, okay, I just go to the boss like I am, I don't need the armor, I can beat him. So they can do that too. Okay. When, when, you, when you say bosses, um, I guess you can get armor parts or weapons from the bosses as well? Sure, I mean you can cut almost everything in the game to pieces, so why not bosses? <laughs> no really, so uh, also with the bosses it depends on how you fight against them, it's what you get as a loot. So again you can fight very uh, like defensive and try to just target the parts that are easiest to target or you say okay I think I can get this from the boss, so I'll try this and if you do then you get a special reward for it. And. Um what the, when you talk about the, the, the content, can you say us how, how much content you, the search will offer? You mean how big the game is going to be? Yeah. Well, um, it's certainly not small. <laughs> it's a bit tricky because, as I said, the game world is so open, so some people might take a very easy path through it. And yeah, they might be uh, faster, but if you just do some exploration, if you take on some side quests, talk to some characters, and really yeah, fight with some bosses that you cannot just defeat like that, I think it's easily 20 hours that you play the game, but most likely it's it's more, but I don't know. I mean, it can also be that you try to run through the game just in one pass. I know how fast you'll be, but we'll try to really make it worth going on exploration, finding your stuff, solving side quests, so that you really have the cool gear and loot when you're at the end of the game. And, and I meet other characters as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. It's not like a dead world, but there are a lot of other characters in there and they'll give you quests, but you will not have kind of a quest log, but all the stuff that happens in the game happens kind of around you. There are also no cutscenes where we stop the player, no conversations where we lock him in and with the cameras. You're always in control and you can do what you like. You can walk away from stuff. You can, of course, when you look into the wrong direction, then you maybe don't see the big event happening. But uh, we're, of course, trying to stage it that, you, that you're uh, supposed to, but it's up to you as a player. And also with the side characters, they offer you side quests, they offer you information, they just offer you some maybe creepy, scary dialogues or whatever, if you want to have them. And then you, can, then you can get them. But there's no traditional quest lock or so in the game. Do I fight with uh, other characters together as well? I mean, in a kind of, um, that they help me to fight something? Well, you don't really have a party or so uh, coming with you, but you will have support, but mostly it's indirect support. So you can trigger actions, they do, they can support you, they can take on enemies sometimes, and then you can come in and, yeah, do your stuff. And uh, I have one question, when, the, when I started as a worker in the company and it doesn't look like it used to be, it reminds me a bit on Half-Life. 
Uh, yeah, of course, we were thinking Half-Life sometimes when we have a, 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 comp a factory in the future and something is not working as intended. But um, yeah, I mean, we like Half-Life, but it's, I think it will feel very, very differently when you play it. Okay, and uh, how long do we need to wait for the search? It'll be ready very um, early next year, I think. <laughs> and it's coming out on PC and console at the same time? Yes, PC, PlayStation 4, Xbox One. How, when you say beginning of next year, how much of the, uh, is of the game is already finished? finished? Well, we're now in pre-alpha stage and um, we're shaping up all the levels. It's a bit more difficult this time because we really try to put it all together. Story, what's happening around you, um, the combat, and we build the levels up like this. So it's not someone creating a level and then we populate it, but it's all happening at the same time. So we build it layer by layer. And, uh, which you normally should do in development, but it doesn't happen so often. We really, we really have a very strong approach there right now. And we got almost all levels laid out right now. There are already big levels that uh, you can, that I can <laughs> play through. <laughs> and hopefully you too uh, very soon. Um, yeah, but uh, it's, it's progressing and uh, we know what we want to do. We have it all set up and we hope that it'll work out more or less like we, well, like we planned it to be. Cool, thank you. Thank you.